So let's look at the following example that will deal with the pointing vector and intensity of electromagnetic waves. Let's suppose that electromagnetic radiation from the sun travels to the earth with an intensity of 1500 watts per meter squared. Now if we are examining, if we are considering a single electromagnetic wave coming from the sun moving to the earth, let's find the peak electric and magnetic fields of our particular electromagnetic wave that is carrying this much intensity. So this is diagrammed in the following picture. So this is our x-axis and our electromagnetic wave is moving from the sun found somewhere on the left to the right where we have the earth. So it's propagating along the x-axis. Now our electric field is alternating along the y-axis and our magnetic field is alternating along the z-axis where the z-axis is coming out of the board. So we essentially want to calculate the highest possible, the maximum values for the electric field. So we want to find what these two values represent. Likewise, we want to calculate the maximum, the peak magnetic fields, which are given by the following two points. So, let's begin by recalling the relationship between peak electric field and our intensity of the propagating wave. So the intensity of our wave, the average power per unit area given by S with the bar symbol on top, which is also known as the pointing vector, is equal to one half multiplied by epsilon naught, multiplied by C, the speed of light, multiplied by our peak electric field E naught to the second power. Now if we take this equation and solve for our peak electric field, if we solve for E naught, we get the following result. So our peak electric field, the maximum electric field of this particular electromagnetic wave is equal to the square root of 2 multiplied by the intensity divided by epsilon naught multiplied by C. So we know what our intensity is. It's 1500 watts per meter squared. So we plug that in for our S bar. Now we know what epsilon naught is. It's simply a constant. It's equal to 8.85 times 10 to negative 12 coulombs squared divided by newtons multiplied by meters squared. And we know what C is, it's also a constant. It's three times 10 to the eight meters per second. So we multiply, then divide, take the square root, and we get about 1,063 volts per meter is the maximum value of the, the electric field of this particular electromagnetic wave. Now let's find what the peak magnetic field. So let's recall what the relationship is between the peak magnetic field and our pointing vector, the intensity of our wave. So the intensity of the wave is equal to one half multiplied by C, the speed of light divided by mu naught, a constant, multiplied by B naught squared, where B naught is the peak magnetic field. So once again, we solve for the peak magnetic field, we get the following equation. The peak magnetic field is equal to the square root of 2 multiplied by the intensity, multiplied by mu naught, divided by C, and we take the square root. So. Let's actually plug in our values. So we have 2 multiplied by the intensity multiplied by the constant 4 pi multiplied by 10 to negative 7 teslas multiplied by meters divided by m's and we divide by the speed of light 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So we multiply, divide, take the square root and we get a value of approximately 1.28 times 10 to negative 6 teslas. 
So, this is the maximum electric field reached by our electromagnetic wave, and this is the maximum magnetic field that is reached by that same electromagnetic wave. Now notice, even though the numerical value of the electric field is greater than the magnetic field, both of these fields carry the same exact quantity of energy. So once again, we conclude the following. The magnitude of E is greater than B within an electromagnetic wave as seen in the following example. This is greater than this. However, both fields contribute the same amount of energy. So the electric and magnetic fields carry the same quantity of energy.